Hi, this is Maggie, and this is a quick tip for those of you working the cross stitch chart project in our Facebook group. If you haven't checked it out, come on over to Facebook and you can see what's happening. There's also a bunch of videos here on YouTube about it. Now, for this one, what I want to show you is outlining. So I have my thread color black and my back stitch selected. It's a little bit gray here, and that's how I know it's selected. And there are two things to notice. One, say I've done this side and I haven't done this side, but it's difficult sitting back to tell where you are. So the first thing is really get comfortable with Zoom when you're working basically any of the digitizing programs. And then after Zoom, you can see I've done this part, but the chart gives you a bit of a line, say over here, and it can be hard to tell where it is. So when you're outlining, really the smartest thing to do is to put background off because then it's really visible where the stitches are and where you're missing stitches. And since I'm selected, all I have to do is just start placing them. And if you have trouble with maneuvering your mouse, make it bigger, and it will be even easier to place your stitches. The smaller it is, the more detail and the better hand control you need, and the bigger it is, the easier it's gonna be for you to manipulate. So this is the little tip we have today, is don't forget you can turn your background on and off and if you already have your design in and you're just outlining all the way around it, then go ahead and put background off and you'll really be able to see what you're doing. So that's today's tip. See you in the Facebook group. Hi, this is Maggie and I want to show you a few little things um, as we work towards Finishing up our October stitch along, focusing on cross stitch design from a chart. So first, just to show you these things, I'm going to click start a new cross stitch design with no picture. And that little buzz in the background is just my coffee pot turning off. And just so it's a little bigger so you can see, we'll set this to 30 crosses by 30 crosses and hit return on a Mac to make it take. Now, one of the things that is covered in depth in your manual that you might not have noticed, and it's something I tend to glance over here. It's so easy to see what I'm working on, but you can see I have full cross selected. When I move in the chart, do you see that little X from my arrow? It's telling me that full cross is selected. And each time I choose a different tool, it shows me the tool on the cursor. So as I'm working in my design space, I can see which tool I have selected. And if I choose erase, you'll see it's red and the same tool. So with this cursor symbol, I would have erase freehand backstitch. And I could change it to erase cross and if I take the erase off, it's in black and white. So for those of you who watch your cursor, again, I tend to notice out here, but you can glance and get used to seeing if you have the right tool selected. And if you, I have no X's to select, so we can't really do that. Now, the other thing that um, I was thinking this might be easier to load in two parts is when we do freehand backstitch. Freehand backstitch comes in by dragging. It does not come in by a click placement. So you can't go, oh, I'm going to click in a circle. See, I'm clicking. I don't think you can hear it. Nothing happens. You must drag. And when you drag, you might think you're dragging in a circle, but you'll notice the freehand backstitch will make a straight line. So if you're trying to do a circle, you actually would be dragging separate pieces, letting go, 
and dragging again. It's a repeat drag for little parts or big parts. So it doesn't actually do a circle for you. It just gives you the ability to move in small parts for the stitch. And again, if you just click and drag, it's going to make a straight line, not a curve. See how this goes? So this is something that might take a little more practice than some of the other stitches as you do a chart. And again, as I mentioned in the other video, and we'll see when we work on our chart that has freehand stitches, if you blow it up, it's going to be easier for you to decide that you can use freehand backstitch. Not decide to use it, but you'll see it's easier to place your stitches if you have something you're copying as you get bigger and you're working on the freehand. Okay, so I'm working a little Christmas sampler and I just want to show you the tool Duplicate. When I select anything, I click the box select and you'll see my cursor looks like the box select symbol as soon as you come down, see that? And I can select this star that I isolated from one of the fill patterns. And now if I hit Command D, I have a new one. So copy and paste gives you Command C to Command V. So C for copy, V for paste. And if you're on a PC, it's Control Copy, Control C. Control V for paste. Unfortunately, if you're on a PC, the commands are Alt H D U, and it's probably easier. Let's see, let's move this little guy. Maybe I want one over here to use your double click than to remember that set of keystrokes. But on a Mac, the command D is the fastest way if you need to make a bunch of something. The other neat thing is, if you're going around in a circle, it comes where the last one was, just below it. So I'm not, when I copy paste, that I'll be on top of this one, and you'd have to kind of drag them all over the place, and this puts them very close, Command D each time, or Duplicate Selected, and you can put them wherever you want. And I'll be moving these all around. But notice each time it comes where the other one was. So I'm going to close this now and get back to some other things. But I did want you to become familiar with duplicate. Duplicate selected. You use the box select to make it happen. And then Command D or use your drop down for duplicate.